So today we're talking about whether or not it's worth upgrading your Squire Jazzmaster trim to a Fender one. As you may have guessed, I have already changed out the trim in this guitar. It is a Squire Vintage Modified Jazzmaster. And I'll tell you my thoughts on the trim assembly and whether or not I think it's worth it as we get into the video. But before we get into that, I want to tell you about some modifications that I've done to this guitar. If you're interested in any of these modifications, click on the eye in the upper part of the screen and it'll take you to a playlist that contains all the videos. I started by changing out the stock white pit guard to a tortoiseshell pit guard and I went through a couple of iterations before I settled on one that I like. From there, I shielded the cavities to get rid of some unwanted noise. I actually changed out the neck to one that had nice black inlays and white binding but then I changed it back. I installed a shim in the neck to help the brake angle off the back of the bridge. I added some foam underneath the pickups to help stop them from sinking down. And most recently, I changed out the tortoiseshell pickguard to a gold anodized pickguard. And as a matter of fact, I had a really hard time hunting down one that wasn't really expensive. So I found one that was reasonably priced and of good quality, but when I got it, it was pretty orangey in color. So I came up with a method to make it less orange and more gold. So now let's get into the trim assembly itself. First of all, why? Why would I want to replace a Squire one with a Fender one? Because the only difference is the word Fender on it, right? Like I said, we'll get into the details in the later part of the video, but suffice it to say, in my opinion, the stock bare bones Squire trim assembly looks sort of naked or plain. I just think that the Fender logo on there makes it look like it should. I will tell you that I paid about $40 for this trim assembly. And speaking of which, as I got into researching these things, I found out that there are a couple of different part numbers that Fender makes that are all pretty similar, but of course have some differences. Before we go on, I'll give you a quick breakdown of the part numbers I found and the differences in those. So part number, and I have to read these off because I can't remember them, uh, part number 005-4466-00 is an American Vintage Reissue USA Jazzmaster or Jaguar trim. So the price range on this one I found to be anywhere between $80 and $120. It is the most expensive out of these three that I'm going to tell you about. I couldn't really find out for sure whether it's made of chrome or nickel or chrome plated or nickel plated. The specs were kind of all over the place depending on which site I went to. There are versions apparently that come with the trim or the vibrato arm and there are some versions that do not. Also interestingly, and it seems to be the case with all these numbers, well except one, uh, the 000 on the end is sometimes uh, found to be 049, and I don't know what the difference is. If you happen to know the difference by chance, then comment below and please share your information with us. So on to the next one. It's part number 007-6232-049 or dash zero zero zero. So this one is a Mexican, I'm sorry, a Mexico classic player trim, but it's made in Korea. Go figure. The price range on this one is about 50 to $60. At least that's what I found in my research. The consensus I believe is that it is chrome plated. Uh, it's also called the classic series trim, I think. Again, the specs on these are kind of all over the place and Fender doesn't, that I know of, list these anywhere and explain what the part numbers are and the differences between those. Which actually brings up a good point. At one time I made a video called like the exhaustive Jazzmaster bridge list and in it I kind of detailed all the bridges of for jazz masters and jaguars that I could find I know it's probably not exhaustive because there's more out there but it was basically all the main ones and the differences in those uh, I went into pretty good detail and so if you're interested in maybe me going and researching these different um, trim or vibrato assemblies and detailing those making a video about that uh, leave a comment below and maybe I can do that okay and so the last one is a part number 026-4248-000 and for this one I didn't see any instance of it with the 049 on the end. I mean, I don't know why all the other ones have a 049 or a 000, but for whatever reason, this one does not. Now, this one is a made in Japan, but it's called a 62 trim, um, which, you know, is sort of a vintage. I don't know why there's an American vintage one versus a Japanese 62. I mean, the logic here just... It just doesn't seem to make any sense. And as far as the price goes on this one, I found this one to be anywhere from 45 to $80. So this one, the price range really ran the gamut and was kind of all over the place. Now this one again, is hard to tell whether or not it's nickel plated or chrome. I believe it's chrome plated. I mean, it's sitting here in front of me and I'm pretty darn sure it's just chrome plated. So nickel, you may or may not know, ages a little bit differently than chrome. Nickel will age over time pretty well. It'll get like a patina or a hue or like a matte finish on it and it'll just have a natural aging to it. Chrome really doesn't age unless you scratch it up and purposefully make it look 
aged and even then it's kind of hard to do and make it look believable okay so let's get into the meat and potatoes of this thing I'm gonna show you this assembly as I got it show you me installing it on my guitar give you some details about it and tell you whether or not I think it's worth it okay so here you go doing a little bit of an unboxing here you know these things may be beneficial or not I like to have an idea of what you know the packaging it comes in what it looks like what to expect when you get it uh, I did come on a fender you know licensed official packaging um, genuine parts as you can see there and I'm going to show you as I take it out here or before what the part number is so again it is 02642480 and I actually don't think it said anywhere on the packaging that I remember or that I can see here that it was made in Japan but everything online that I saw said that it was in fact made in Japan or had some kind of Japanese you know title attached to it so pulling it out here you know yeah it says fender so one big difference in this one versus the Squire one is that it has a a trim locking system a little button on the top there that you can lock down the trim if you were to break a string or something like that you would not be able to pull up on the trim you would only be able to push down so one thing I was curious about as you probably are is whether or not this stock Squire trim arm would fit into the collet, collet or receiver part of the mechanism um, I didn't know if it would be too big or too small but as a matter of fact as you can see here it fits great uh, just like it did in the stock Squire one so here I'm just taking the strings off my Jazzmaster and you're probably not interested in seeing this but I just want to make a point that you can reuse your strings a lot of people just cut them off these are fairly new and I didn't want to waste them uh, if you're careful and you take some time to do it you can reuse your strings especially if you have vintage tuners with the slots and you stick the string down into the shaft of the tuner uh, it makes it pretty easy to reuse your strings so I'm just taking off the original trim assembly now and you know it's just got what two four six screws in it to hold it down to the body okay so here you can see some differences in the internals of these things there's a tapered nut that attaches to the the adjustment screw mechanism for the spring and on the Japanese version that nut is brass at least it looks like that also the locking mechanism it looks like it's brass and there's a little nut it looks like a more substantial nut and washer on the on the uh, Japanese one uh, versus the Squire one it looks like the Squire just has a cheaper part for the nut that holds on um, the collet or the collet I still know what you call that thing and then on the front uh, there's a little screw that like I said is the adjustment for the spring the tension and on the Squire it's a little smaller less substantial and on the fender or the, the uh, Japanese one it's just a little bit more substantial maybe um, a better quality screw who knows but really those are the main differences so here I am installing the new assembly on the guitar I was curious to know if the screw holes in the plate would match up or align with the holes in the body of the guitar and in fact they do fit perfectly uh, no problems whatsoever it's pretty simple you just screw the thing back on the body and I also put back on those used strings that I had but you know it really couldn't be more simple it's a pretty easy change out to do you know even if you're not very handy it's very easy to do to upgrade from the Squire one to the Fender one just a matter of taking some screws out and putting some screws in stringing it back up so really that's it now at the end of this video I'm going to play the guitar and show you how it sounds does it sound different no in all actuality I don't really know that there are many differences at all between the Squire trim assembly and the one from Fender made in Japan as far as the materials the functionality even the feel they're pretty much the same so is it worth it in my opinion yes I mean I paid like I said about $40 for mine now in your research maybe you can't find one for say under $60 in that case is it worth it to you I don't know you'd have to make that call it probably wouldn't be to me but like I said I found a pretty good deal on it and I pulled the trigger and I'm glad I did you know what are the differences well you've got the trim lock uh, system on there you got the little locking knob and you got the fender logo which in my opinion just makes it look more right or authentic of course that's just my opinion everyone's got their own and you're welcome to disagree with me now before we get to the playing I wanted to tell you a little bit about the locking system on the trim assembly for the Jazzmaster or the Jaguar this is a Squire one so I don't know if you can see that or not but it of course does not have the locking system but what it does it's a little button that goes slides back and forth right here and I'll try to show you a better diagram but it, the button slides in and so it goes between the top plate and this plate that uh, actually moves with the arm and moves the strings back and forth so it slides into that little space in between there 
And if you go to allset.guitars, I'll try to remember to put the link in the video description below, but they have a really good explanation of how this works and how to set it up. But more or less what happens, and this is the way that makes the most sense to me, is that if the uh, spring tension is too loose, then the locking system can just slide back and forth too easily, and it really doesn't do anything. So you could slide it into place and you could still pull the strings up and it would still affect the uh, you know the tension of the spring so if it's too loose it slides back and forth and you can still pull up the idea is that it's fit just rightly and that you can slide it in uh, without really anything moving and then as you pull up on the strings of the arm it doesn't go anywhere so in other words if you were to break a string you slide that in there and it doesn't move it doesn't change the tension on your strings or change your tuning if you have it too tight then you can't fit the little locking mechanism in between the two plates and then again it doesn't do anything because you can't utilize it so that's it that's my experience with this Japanese made Fender Jazzmaster slash Jaguar trim assembly please like the video uh, comment subscribe do all those things that all the youtubers tell you to do it really does help the channel out and I certainly appreciate it until then we'll see you in the next video